Good morning, my friends. It's me, Duncan Trussell. You're listening to the Duncan Trussell Family Hour podcast. It is 8 a.m. 8 a.m. here in Los Angeles. I managed to wake up this morning at 6 a.m. And I have pride over that, which shows that things are, that I've gotten a little, I've got the things are off track for me. Because if you're proud about getting up early in the morning, it's a good sign that uh, you're being kind of lazy. Because the best thing to do is to get up early in the morning. Waking up early in the morning is one of the greatest ways to reset yourself. There's a lot of ways to reset yourself. Like running five miles is a way of pressing reset on your uh, on your body. Uh, waking up really early in the morning and dragging yourself out of bed and standing underneath uh, the beautiful morning sky and looking around at how beautiful the morning is to remind yourself that for so many months or years, depending on who you are and what you do, you've been missing one of the most glorious times of the day, which is the morning. Morning is the best time of the day. You know who you're not going to run into in the morning? Kesha. That's why it's good. That alone is a reason the morning is a beautiful time to, to be out there. And yes, God damn it, I am going to talk shit about Kesha. I don't like her. I just listened to this awful song. I, this new Ke- I don't know if it's a new Kesha song, but I had the terrible misfortune of stumbling upon this Kesha song where she's like dancing around. There's pentagrams and she's telling teenagers they should die, basically. It's a million times creepier than Black Sabbath. Because, like, Black Sabbath or any of the old death metal or heavy metal bands that you had to play, you had to play them backwards to hear Kill Yourself. Kesha just comes out and it says, yeah, just get f- choked to death on sperm, teens. I don't like it. It's weird. I feel bad. Seems like she's, I mean, not, I know I'm going to sound like an old man here, but it really does feel like she's luring teens into, like, texting and driving. That's the, that for, that's what it ends up translating. Like for Kesha, her noble idea of prancing around at night through nightclubs, giving hand jobs to bouncers and snorting enough cocaine to kill a fucking sperm whale, which essentially is what she is, is not what translates to a to a kid. For a kid, living it up probably just means driving their mom's Hyundai down the wrong side of the freeway while texting about how they're living life and obliterating some minivan filled with a family on their way to, to I don't know, Disneyland at night. That's weird. I don't, anyway, the point is, the morning is the opposite of Kesha. I wish more singers would embody the morning more than Kesha's version of the slimy, stinky, glittery, gross night where like people have sprayed on that awful stinking body spray all over their body and are just sort of like i don't like going out at night to the to to like to where people are really like have quote having a good time they're not having a good time at least it doesn't feel like that to me anytime that i've been you know i just went through a spate of going out more times than i have in years I won't go into details about it, but I ended up going out to, you know, I had to go out to clubs at night more times than I would have liked. And uh, it was, every time, it was just this jarring, shocking experience. And it always felt like I was having to, like, pretend that this wasn't just walking into one of those, when you see a, a nature video of a hole in the ground and they show the baby snakes squirming all over each other. That's just what it, that's what it feels like at these clubs. Like, I don't, when I was, when I, l- listen, Kids, when I was growing up, we didn't go, we wouldn't go drinking at clubs. I mean, sure, maybe you'd go somewhere and have a few beers, but if you were really going for it, you'd go to like some warehouse where people were dropping liquid acid into your mouth and using body paint to paint each other. Torch, people swinging torches around and stuff. You didn't go to some bar and have a couple of martinis and bowl. With people dressed up like they're from the 40s and then act like you're having fun even though you can just feel the effects of the booze sinking in and you're just surrounded by people growing increasingly desperate because they're not going to have somebody to finger that night. 
That's not what we did. What we did is we went to places where it felt like there was a possibility that the universe was going to split open and aliens were going to drag us into some alternate dimension where we were going to merge again with the Godhead. You know, Sufis dressed in robes, hanging out, people dancing in bizarre, intense patterns that seem to indicate that they had merged together to form some kind of universal kaleidoscopic flesh being not fucking goddamn waiting for a, uh, the, the valet while you're having to breathe some asshole cigar smoke and listen to people with alcohol poisoning yammer about how they're have a great access to cocaine Gross. Fucking Kesha is the Pied Piper of pigs. Anyway, I sound like an old man. That's not the point of all this. What was I talking about? Here's the point. I've, um, I've, I've become addicted to uh, this show called The Walking Dead. And uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of it. I actually watched all the various seasons of this show on and off i sort of like tuned out halfway through last season just because i got bummed out by uh the small t anyway I'm, i won't go into detail i don't want to spoil the show for you but i usually download stuff to watch because I, I i i don't like watching commercials and i don't like watching cable tv watching cable tv is really creepy to me uh, and every, but I do like it because it's creepy, but then I don't like it because it's creepy because cable T, you know, TV, if Satan is the father of lies, then TV would be Satan's hypnotic cock, just shoving its way into the brains of all those watching television. And that's fun if you can see it that way, you know, but if you don't see it that way, then it's, I think it's a bit of a dangerous thing because you can end up sort of not even realizing that you're getting conditioned or programmed, or dare I say, brainwashed by uh, one of the most incredibly hypnotic devices that has ever existed on this planet. I mean, it is hypnotic. And that's what's happening. When you're watching TV, you are uh, in, it, it's, in, it's inducing hypnosis, and there's all these different phases. Like, just watch yourself. Go into a state of mindfulness the next time you sit down to watch TV. Like, really just sit down and watch the way your body feels as you begin to relax and your third eye opens up and you begin to absorb the uh, information that's being slung at you by the television. Most of us, when we're watching TV at night, we're also like using neurological lubricants to try to really like moisten ourselves up and get ready for, uh, for penetration by the major corporations of the planet. So we're drinking, we're smoking weed. I don't know what you guys do. Maybe you're snorting ketamine or heroin, but I doubt it, but maybe. But whatever you're doing, usually the ritual of watching TV for many, many people also involves some kind of intoxicant. And uh, so you get it nice and loosened up and you turn on the TV and you watch it. And so there's these two phases, these two things that are happening on every n network TV show, which is the induction phase of the hypnosis, which is the story that you're watching. You know, it's the it's the actors, it's the show itself. That, that induces the initial state. It's very hypnotic because they call them actors, but really what they are is hypnotists. A good actor is a great hypnotist in the sense that they are so interesting to watch because they're all very symmetrical and they're all very, uh, they, they just have this like interesting quality to them. That's what, that, that's what makes a great actor. They, they, they say you look good on camera. You know, they have a lot of names for it. He's got it. And what that it is, is the ability to draw attention. They're like these little attention magnets, these little uh, uh, gravity fields that suck human attention into them. That's what they do. And it's awesome. It's really cool to watch, but that's why it, when, when you watch acting, especially like on The Walking Dead, and you look at the way the characters are acting, you'll notice that the way they're acting is not the way humans act at all. Their movements are more pronounced. Their movements are hypnotic because that's what they're doing. They're hypnotizing you so that you can get absorbed completely into the show. And this is why people get really upset and mad and when, when there's a shitty actor on a show. And what people will say is, God, man, that guy brings me out of it. 
And what he means is he brings me out of the hypnotic state that all these other great hypnotists have placed me into. And that's an uncomfortable feeling. You don't like that feeling. You want to be drawn completely into the show until you experience at the very height a kind of ego transference where you're no longer even existing in your bedroom or living room. But now you have completely merged with the show itself. You are practically one of the characters. And that is when you really begin to experience the uh, kind of like uh, the high of television, it, 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 which is this sort of, you experience the loss that the characters experience and you experience the triumphs that the characters experience. And now that, that's what makes a good TV uh, and good movies so insanely addictive. But for this to happen, for you to really merge with these uh, characters, it requires a, a, a fairly profound state of hypnosis. So that's what's happening. TV is hypnotizing you. That's the first phase. The second phase of this hypnotic induction is that in between the uh, uh, show, you get these products shown to you. You get all these weird products that they want to sell to you. So... Now listen, what if you're a salesman and you and and you want to sell your stuff? Who would you rather sell your stuff to? Would you rather sell your stuff to somebody who you had to go door to door and talk to them? Uh or would you rather sell your stuff to somebody who has already been hypnotized by a master hypnotist? Clearly, the latter. But the you know, the former happens too and that's why a good salesman is also a good hypnotist because a good salesman We'll come in, we'll meet you, we'll size you up, we'll analyze your weaknesses and your strengths and your insecurities, and we'll begin to actually mimic and mirror the way that you are. It's called mirroring. They'll start moving the way that you move so that you begin to sort of experience that same kind of merging with the salesperson where the differences between you two are uh, seemingly obliterated. And then you're just, this guy, you know, I, you know what? This guy really just seems like me. I guess I will trust him. So it's like... It's the same idea, but uh, TV is a much more uh, advanced way of selling stuff because they, they lure the human attention into this trap using this uh, using uh, shows, and then once the human attention has been sucked in, it, it wants to stay there, and once it's there and nice and big and dilated and open and gaping and lubricated and oozing, then the corporations come and they shove their uh, materialistic cocks deep inside of our consciousness and fill our brains with all these weird uh, seeds which may or may not grow. In fact, the odds are that whatever the product is that they're selling on a TV show, you're not going to want. And uh, the, the odds are more likely that you're not going to want it because the corporations know that they only need, you know, 5% of people watching to be interested in the product. That's enough, especially with something like The Walking Dead or a very popular show. The Walking Dead gets 16 million viewers. 16 million. Think about that. 16 million people watch The Walking Dead. Now that might be a tough uh, thing to really picture or to visualize. So I have done some math because I started thinking about this and I started thinking like, well, what would 16 million brains look like? Especially because it's a show about zombies. So I Google searched, I, I did some research here. The average human brain weighs three pounds. So if we have 16 million people watching The Walking Dead and they all have the, an average size brain, then you get 48 million pounds of brains which are being uh, hypnotized by The Walking Dead. Now that comes out to 24,000 tons. Thank you, WolframAlpha.com. Check it out. It's a very amazing website. 24,000 tons. Now... That is to to visualize how if if you if you if you like hamburger meated is that a that's not a word at all but if you shoved all those brains together like you're making a hamburger that would be a brain that was half the size of the Titanic that's a twenty four thousand ton brain six thousand elephants that's a six thousand elephants worth of brains. Or approximately nine Olympic-sized swimming pools 
filled with brains being jizzed on by the walking dead and the commercials that they put in between it. Um, so that's a lot of brains, man. That's 2.78 acres of brains. Like if you, if you could stretch all, if you spread all these brains out in, in Olympic sized swimming pools, then you, you would have acres of brains. Like when you see the solar panel arrays that they have out in the desert, it would be like that. Like you could fly over it with a helicopter and look down and just see this huge swath of brains. Only instead of like processing solar energy, the brains are processing the energy that's being shot out of these weird rect hypnotic rectangles that we all have in our houses. And um, another way to look at it is imagine the if you imagine a brain half the size of a, the Titanic. And then imagine that that brain was inside a, a giant pig. Think how big that pig would be. That would be a huge fucking pig. And that's essentially what's happening. You see, these corporations and, and, and the networks and, and the government recognizes that the population of America is which is 319 million people or 957 million pounds of brains could be divided up into like, kind of like a herd of pigs and uh, with giant, giant brains. And so the idea is you've got to hypnotize these giant pigs for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one reason you want to hypnotize these pigs is because if you hypnotize them in the right way, it will cause their nipples to secrete uh, this special energy, which which we call money. So The Walking Dead gets this pig, this giant pig, which is all the people watching it, uh, to secrete out of all the various nipples on its body. And these nipples represent all the different demographics. So when you're watching, <clears throat> when you're watching a whatever an advertisement for Dr. Scholl's foot sponge or whatever it is and you're like I'm, i would never put that in my fucking shoe my feet feel great well that that's because that it's not that beam is not being directed at your particular nipple that, that, that that's on this giant pig of which you're one tiny little pixel but then when you watch something else who knows maybe it's a commercial for the beautiful new ipad my god the glorious glowing sweet thin super perfect ipad and you're watching that you might kind of be like, man, you know what? I, I wish I could afford one of those. That'd be really cool. That means that your nipple is starting to glisten. The part of the nipple that you are on the giant hell pig that's being conditioned and controlled by these massive corporations has started getting a little wet. Like they're starting to get you into the idea of owning an iPad, which is why they don't just show the product in these commercials. They don't do that. They they actually... They actually um, show the product being surrounded by a specific lifestyle that's what it that's what they show so when you're watching you all you'll see like my god look at these well-dressed beautiful people and their lives they're so happy they're always so happy in these commercials the only time the actors aren't in a state of deep materialistic ecstasy in these commercials is when it's a depression commercial and even then they're doing great even then it's like they're going to be wandering around some beautiful park surrounded by happy medicated people who are just sort of trying to get them to come to terms with the fact that they need to take some serotonin uptake re-inhibitors so they can exist in a society where you can basically only move at right angles and if you um if you uh if you uh right angles in traffic i mean if you want to walk in circles around your house you can but once you go out into public it's like you you're moving at right angles friend stoplights and you're just essentially trapped in what could be compared to some kind of massive maze for uh the weird species that we are um and that might make you feel depressed and the answer to that is to take serotonin uptake re-inhibitors of course not to not to ex experiment with psychedelics or to uh, meditate you'll never see that on a commercial ever so anyway the point is you these pro the, not only are when you watch uh, these commercials are you being sold products you're also being sold an idea of what is normal 
They're showing you what is normal, and it's really powerful. Like, when you watch these things, you really can you know, fall into the idea, like, my God, yeah, I guess that's what girls are supposed to look like. I guess that's what women look like, and that's what women do. And I guess that that's the ideal man, is this kind of symmetrical cowboy who's, like, can't get his dick hard, so he's got to take Cialis. I don't know if you've seen that commercial, but this rugged, symmetrical man. Now, if you go out in the public and you look around, you will see that the human species tends to not be beautiful. I think we're beautiful, you know, I, I think there is beauty in, in inside of us, not to sound like a fucking Hallmark card, but, you know, if you go and look around, people are disheveled generally, they're, they, maybe they've like combed their hair or something, but people in general, they're just, you know, unique creatures with wrinkles that come from the, the, the many hardships to be endured when you get shot out of a vagina into a dimension where everyone's going to die. But when you watch a commercial, man, everybody is so beautiful and symmetrical and they're all wearing really nice clothes and man, they've got it together. Aren't they buttoned up? They are so buttoned up, like they figured it out. I don't know what they did. I don't know what classes they took or what lecture series they went to, but they have really gotten themselves nice and polished and fixed up. Their hair is perfect. Their eyes are sparkling with this glow that usually comes from love between them and their mate you know they'll show like a, a couple wandering into a car dealership and this couple i mean this is a couple that is this is a couple that hasn't been so balanced and in love since the huxtables this is a couple that is so perfect for each other like they it's an act of god that these two came together we're talking president like this is the same thing you see when like obama uh and michelle are together like my god they see they are so fucking happy this is like pure happiness and they're everything's working out they flip some houses i guess and now they're gonna go get into deep debt uh by getting into a strange bargain with a bank because that's what happens when you're buying a car so it's really weird because these, like when when these when this beautiful couple wanders into a car dealership, uh, they 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 um, they um, they they seem so clever. They're always portrayed as like really clever, like they know how to pick the right car. This couple is not going to pick a, a car that doesn't have what they need to keep their family safe. This couple is going to pick a car that is completely going to supply all that they need for their wonderful offspring. So basically the car dealership is, the, 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 the evil car dealership, which represents all the other dealerships that are selling other cars that are exactly like the car this particular dealership's trying to sell. Not only is that car dealership trying to rip you off, it wants to hurt your fucking family. It wants to hurt your family. So, you're clever. These couples are always depicted as clever. They're clever enough to buy the right car. They're not clever enough to understand that they've been completely manipulated and sucked in by a massive banking cartel. They don't realize that. And most of us don't realize that because it all seems normal because we've been seeing it so much from the moment we were born. You watch a car commercial and we get used to that weird thing that pops up at the bottom of the screen that shows the APR and monthly finance, payment option, payment, fast talking weird guy and all this like fine print suddenly springs up in front of you. That just seems normal. That is not fucking normal. See, this is why selling cars, this is, if you wonder why like car commercials always come up on the, on, on the TV, why it seems like everybody apparently is in the process of buying a new car, here's why. Selling a car is one of the greatest achievements that a, a salesperson can make. Because not only are you selling a fucking car, you're getting somebody chained into a debt contract. And that is so lucrative you haven't just sold this product you've managed to like get someone trapped in a goddamn deal that they, it's going to end up costing them so much more than the car actually cost and they make it seem like you know no monthly payments for the first year it, it, none of it matters because all that really is happening is you are getting into debt with with a bank and some of us can just afford to buy a car flat out but you'll never see that on a car commercial You'll never see the couple come in and say, all right, we'll buy the car. 
here's a check for the full price of the car. Never will you see that because that is not what the car companies want. The car companies want you to get into debt so that they can make money off of you having to pay interest on the thing that you bought that more than likely you didn't need at all. Because earlier versions of cars, even last year's model, man, it's like you got to get rid of those fucking things. End of the year sale, we got to get rid of these pieces of shit. They're, they're uh, eight months old. It's a, it's, a, it's a really creepy, devious thing. And it's fun to, to sit back and watch it all and know that what you're witnessing is the uh, ongoing manipulation of a giant uh, pig that consists of all the people who happen to be tuning into that show. And uh, what you're also seeing is not only are they trying to get that pig to secrete money out of its poor little nipples, they're trying to teach the pig what's right and what's wrong. Which is why these shows always have these kind of obvious morals where the good guy tends to win. But what is a good guy? A good guy is usually a guy who follows the exact same principles that happen to coincide with uh, the, the current laws of society. So the idea is if you follow the rules and you follow the laws, you'll tend to be okay in the end. But if you don't, then you're going to end up getting your brain eaten by zombies. Or some various, some version of that. I mean, the most extreme cases are the shows like Locked Up Raw, which actually like scare the shit out of you by showing what happens if you get caught uh, with like, you know, weed in your pocket in the wrong state. You can end up in a giant dungeon filled with rapists. So TV is fucking intense to watch. And I know a lot of this stuff might not be new to you. Forgive this long-winded rant in the beginning. It's just something that's really gotten to me. But uh, here's what's, here's the whole point of this thing. 26 minutes in. While I was watching The Walking Dead, I began to realize that these characters in The Walking Dead, many, 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 many of them were ex-military. They keep bringing up the military, the military, the military. And it's like they're, 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 there's tanks everywhere. And there's like, look, I understand maybe someone in the military would be more likely to su su survive the uh, zombie apocalypse. But a lot of these people will say things like, no, I'm in the reserves. It's just weird to me. Like, I don't, I don't know if the writers were like, yeah, let's populate this, this world with ex-military people, but there seems to be something a little more sinister there. Because the implication of that when you're watching survivors in an apocalypse saying that they're ex-military is that if you want to survive in the world, the best thing you can do is join the military. And that is creepy, man. That's creepy because even if it's unintentional, still in the in the in the in a state of deep hypnotic induction, as you're watching this, if you're like a, a teenager who maybe doesn't have a lot of money, then suddenly you're going to start thinking that a, a viable option for you is to join the military. And not only is it a viable option, but it may help you survive some catastrophic collapse. Now, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's really happening. Uh, I don't know if, um, I don't know how that would even work. You know, like what how, would the military contact the walking dead or would they give them money to, in the same way that product placements happen? Would, would, would that happen? And does, does that happen in TV? Because we know that this happens in like, you know, Jay Leno's show. We know that Jay Leno, during his open opening monologues, will do jokes about Chick-fil-A or Wendy's or uh, Firestone or you name it. He'll, he'll do some kind of weird joke about a product, but he does that because he's it's a form of paid product placement. And we know that, we know that The Walking Dead uh, has, like, cars. Like, you know which car is the product placement because it's a car that somehow has managed to not get that banged up, e even though it's been running, driving over zombies. So, so or maybe it, like, survived somehow, you know, it's it has enough traction to, like, roll out of a pile of smushed zombies or something. You know there's product placement there. And, and I think there might even be product placement in shows like Eastbound and Down. Like, I... I don't, I don't know if you saw this 
it's not really a spoiler, but in this last episode of Eastbound and Down, Kenny Powers, like, goes into this whole weird thing about Southwest Airlines, which is, like, so obvious. So we know that we're used to product placement in our shows and our movies. So the, the question is, is there, like, deeper product placement? Because if massive corporations know that they can sell more product by having shows right in moments where these products are showcased, wouldn't the greatest and most powerful corporation on earth, which is the military industrial complex, also know that by getting shows to portray um, the military as being one of the surefire ways to survive the zombie apocalypse, wouldn't they know that that's like going to be good for their for business? Wouldn't it be in their budget to do the same thing that other corporations do? I don't know. I really don't know. I would love it if anybody had any kind of like information about this. I um, uh, have been uh, talking with this uh, amazing investigative journalist named Amber Lyon. She's going to be on the podcast uh, she, in, in, a, in a month or so. But um, I was asking her about this. Um, and, uh, she, uh, cause she's had like direct, direct experience with, uh, you can, you just Google search her because her story is amazing, but she's had direct experience with like news organization, organizations she's worked for slanting, uh, trying to get her to slant stories based on like apparently wanting to, uh, spread government propaganda or to fix into what it fit, fit into whatever storyline the government wants. But I was asking her, you know, I was telling her about this weird, paranoid moment that I had um about uh about the um with the walking dead and the and the constant reference to the military and she sent me this amazing article that was in Rolling Stone uh by um a C, uh, about CIA CIA infiltration of media it's by Carl Bernstein and I'll, I'll have the link for that it's a very long kind of like complex article but the gist of the thing is that the CIA actually uh has been proven it's been proven that the CIA would hire journalists or have journalists working for them to spread propaganda. So if the CIA is getting into the news networks and this is all proven, this isn't like crazy uh, September 11th conspiracy theory stuff. This has all been proven. Journalists have admitted doing it and have even said that they are proud of their work. So if a government organization is infiltrating the news networks is it that crazy to think that government a government organization like the military would infiltrate shows like the walking dead to try to portray uh ex-military people as being more likely to survive which i i may i think maybe they would be i don't think it's that far off but my question is is it something accidental or is it something intentional and even if it's accidental isn't it kind of fucking weird anyway? Isn't it strange to think that 16 million brains are absorbing this subliminal idea that if you want to survive... there In the last episode, it wasn't just survive. In the last episode, I remember someone saying, I wanted to make something myself. That thing, you know, that party line, you know, that if you want to make something of yourself, you should, you should join the military. Like, that's the best way to really make something of yourself. I mean, watch any military commercial and, and you can see what the storyline is. It doesn't show, when they show commercials for the military, quite often it'll show someone working in some kind of like weird air-conditioned underground bunker with all these awesome displays that looks like they're in 24 or something, like operating these cool computers and beautiful, like, beautiful. You're basically in a spaceship and it's and, and you look great. They don't show you pissing yourself uh, as, you, as, you, as, you, as you try to push your friend's intestines back into his stomach in military commercials, usually. I've never seen that. They don't show that. They don't show the reality of war in these commercials. They show sort of this sort of very polished version of war. They don't show what they showed in Dirty Wars, which is a great great show that you should watch on netflix which is basically like from time to time little accidents happen and strange or parts of the united states military will go into villages in afghanistan and just accidentally shoot pregnant women in the face uh they don't show that either so yeah i don't know 
I don't know. I mean, already, I can already kind of feel the, the, some people out there like, you don't support the troops. Yeah. And I know people, some people who are actually in the military listen to this podcast. Uh, and, and I, and I hope that I'm not depressing you, but I think that if you're out there in the, in the dust, that you're more aware of what's going on, uh, than anybody else. And I, I have a feeling that you, you recognize that maybe the commercials that you've watched about the military don't necessarily portray exactly what happens when you're at war. Uh, and because what really happens when you're at war is you're, you're, you're either like apparently bored off your ass doing like basic, like stocking shit. And like, I don't know, like a lot of just like basic boring drudge work. But, uh, also sometimes you're, um, you're killing people, you're killing people. I mean, isn't that, that, that's kind of like the main idea is that you're killing people. It's like you're a firefighter, only you're not putting out fires, you're putting out human lives that apparently are potentially destructive to the country that you're fighting for. So it's like you're a firefighter of death, or or, 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 I don't know. You're a life extinguisher, basically. So that's my weird rant. Hopefully there's some point to it. Hopefully it makes some kind of sense. The essence being, is The Walking Dead a fucking shill for the military industrial complex? Y'all, can someone find this out for me? Is there a way to find this out? Can somebody investigate whether or not these fucking constant references to the military are based on the idea that people who have been in the military are more likely to survive the zombie apocalypse? Or are they there because there's some kind of weird collusion between The Walking Dead and the fucking military? Are they getting money for talk for like portraying um, care survivors as being former military people? I need to know. Someone find this out for me. Either way, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. It's a lot scarier to imagine uh, that, 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 that some show about zombies and the apocalypse is somehow a hypnotic tool for the military-industrial complex than it is to, um, to, to worry about zombies eating your brains. That's for sure. I mean, in a way, it is like a zombie eating the brain of this fucking giant, weird, poor, hypnotized pig that's being suckled at by the demonic corporations of America that desperately want to get it in debt to the uh, global banking cartels that have somehow, in some weird Gulliver travel way, have managed to use their evil um, contracts to uh, tie this poor being down on the sand of debt, which is uh, the, the way many people find themselves after being tricked by the media. You know, you just end up coming to re- or the realization like, holy shit, man, I'm fucking deeply in debt to the banks through credit cards and motherfucking car payments and mortgages. Shit, I can't even move. I guess I'm a slave. I don't know. Hope this wasn't too long a a rant, you guys. Uh, It's just something I've been thinking about, and I would really love to know if anybody has any information on the uh, military doing product placement, not just in The Walking Dead, but in any shows. And if you could find some good examples for me, I'd love to talk about it more on the podcast. But this is a great podcast today. Uh, And speaking of spraying corporate seeds into your brain, I'm going to do my own form of satanic seeding. But the difference is I don't weave it into my, I don't, it's not like you don't know I'm, I'm trying to sell you something. That's the difference. I get it, friends. People have got to make money. I'm not, I'm not saying like we shouldn't have businesses. We shouldn't have corporations. I'm just saying that if you're fucking subliminally f- tricking people into thinking that they should join an organization where there's a chance that they might get their fucking face blown off in a goddamn cave, then that's weird. <clears throat> Duncan Trussell Family Hour Podcast is brought to you by Amazon.com. Is this bad? Am I a hypocrite? Should I not do advertisements? I don't know. I don't. I, if I do an advertisement for something, I actually believe in it. I mean, I believe in Amazon.com. I certainly fucking use it. I order all kinds of things. You name it, I've ordered it from Amazon.com. I've got it all. Japanese bondage ropes. They're just ropes. I really was a dummy to fall for that. 
I don't know why. Something about Japanese bondage ropes made it seem like it would be more special. But just purple ropes. I guess they're soft, but just pathetically sitting in my drawer. What a creep. Bondage ropes next to my bed. You know, when you're single, you can't have bondage ropes laying around. I got to I gotta throw those away. Japanese bondage ropes, you can get at Amazon.com. Not only that, but you can get vitamins. You can get computers. Listen, you can subscribe to the Great Capitalist Death Machine and just by signing up to Amazon.com and have all kinds of wonderful matter sprayed into your house from Satan. I like matter. Don't get me wrong, guys. I like matter. And I I buy shit that I see on commercials. I've got a fucking suction vacuum. I got one of those wet vacuum cleaners from my hardwood floor sitting in my storage room right now. I've used it twice. I'll probably never use it again. Totally bought that because I got tricked by commercials. Amazon.com. We have a portal. If you go to DuncanTrussell.com and go through the Amazon portal, they will give us a percentage of whatever you buy. So... It's a way for you to help the podcast out without uh, donating or buying a t-shirt, which you could also do. And for those of you who donated since the last podcast, God bless you and thank you uh, for those donations. A lot of people really liked the last podcast and thank you all for all the sweet words to me and my friend Dustin. He, uh, he's a really cool guy and was uh, you guys have really uh, made him supremely happy because I think he'd allowed himself to maybe fall under the into the delusion that uh, he, he he isn't a really cool motherfucker. So thank you all for sending him so many sweet uh, sweet words because he is an awesome person. Um, so yeah, Amazon. We're also brought to you by um, Audible. Audible supplies some amazing audio books, and if you go to audible.com audibletrial.com audibletrial.com forward slash family hour you will get a free audio book see now i feel guilty about doing any commercials after just rambling i'm not against matter people all of you right now are shaking your internet fingers at me because i dare do an advertisement after talking about how tv hypnotizes you and then tries to sell shit to you listen tv won't doesn't talk like i talk that's why you TV's not like this. This is different than... T- I hope you recognize that TV isn't like this. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not talking about how if you go to Amazon.com, you're suddenly going to have a great family or your wife's going to start having sex with you again. I'm just saying if you want to order some lubricant, it's a great way to do it without having to go to a fucking Rite Aid and feel like a goddamn... Perv. Not that you should. Don't, I don't mean to seem sex negative, but it's kind of awkward. To, anytime you're buying, it just feels weird to buy lubricant. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go through that. You go to Amazon.com, get it to your. You could have lube there the next day. See, you won't hear that on TV. I don't know, guys. Maybe we should all just go live. Somewhere else, some where else are we gonna live? We're, we're here. I like this country. I'm not saying this is a bad country. I'm, I'm not even saying that, that we don't need a military. I think we do. We do. You do need defense. I don't. I'm not pretending that the world isn't filled with dangerous factions of brainwashed religious fanatics. I'm sure it's out there. But it's also here, too. I mean, there's a lot of brainwashed religious fanatics here, too. And I'm always going to be on the side of not blowing people up, if possible. So I'm not against the military. And I know a big part of the conditioning is that one of the great crimes is to, like, talk shit about the fucking military. Bill Hicks had one of the greatest jokes ever, which is... uh, I support the war. I'm against the I'm against the troops, but I support the war. Very funny. But yeah, if you're on stage and you even say the slightest thing that even seems remotely against the fucking military, everyone just explodes in rage. It's really weird. That's part of the conditioning, you know. 
We're not supposed to point out the fact that a lot of the wars that are going on right now are wars that nobody would really vote for and in fact no one even fucking understands or cares about. We're not supposed to say that. It's weird. Not really weird. It actually seems exactly what the government would want us to be doing. Coincidentally, I would I, I would much rather have uh, soldiers uh, he- here, back in the United States, doing great works here than risking their lives out in some dirty, dusty, weird desert filled with freak cultists who only want to be left alone, basically, and just are pissed now because we've been blowing them up for so long. So don't confuse me. I don't want to get a lot of shitty fucking tweets from people somehow saying that I'm like, uh, I don't know, anti-America or something. I'm not. And and, and being against fucking uh, stupid wars makes you more of an American because you want the country to be better. God damn it. I'd much rather the money being used to pay for all these ridiculous stupid wars to get plugged into people so we can go to college and, and, and get educated. Fuck it. Plug it into, like, making better goddamn raves happen. I don't know. Manufacture some fan- pa- even better psychedelics. That's what I'd rather have, this military-industrial complex money being used to pay for a new form of NASA that explores psychedelics. How about that? How about instead of a goddamn NASA, we use the money from the military-industrial complex to fund some kind of organization that explores different psychedelic mind states, specifically the weird dimension you go into when you smoke DMT. All right, I jumped the shark just now. I get it. Today's podcast... Oh, I forgot. It's also brought to you by Shore Design T-shirts. The favorite shirt of the military-industrial complex. They love nothing more than putting a Shore Design T-shirt on a freshly exploded... Uh, Afghani child corpse because if nothing else it brightens the mood just a little bit I just watched Dirty Wars I'm sorry guys you gotta watch Dirty Wars it's on Netflix watch before you get up and I don't think any of the people who listen to this are going to be surprised by any of the things I'm saying but before you get up in arms over this go and watch Dirty Wars on Netflix just watch that watch that just to recognize what the rampaging giant that you are a part of called the United States of America is doing in other parts of the world. Shouldn't be doing it. God damn it. That's it. I'm moving into a bunker. I love you guys.